Well, well, Mr. Dammer, you made it till here. I must say you're pretty determined to know how the pan responder move works. So, let's just forget about um, the animated event right now. Let's just go ahead and pass this a regular function, right? I'm going to pass in this args like this. I'm going to just inspect what these args are uh, when I really move them. When I really move this bad boy right here. Right, so I'm just going to clear the console and start moving this. Obviously, it does not move because we have removed the functionality. But if we check the console, we have two arguments which are passed to this function. The first one is some sort of, um, you know, event kind of thing. So you can see it has all that stuff which you would see in an event object, like the native event, event.target, event.current target, all that stuff. Not really useful, but still okay for this example. And the next we have is, hmm, interesting. We have some sort of properties available to us, but interestingly, they are all zeros. Now, there's a reason for that. I'm going to get into that reason later on, but it's the reason is that React Native actually can, tries to conserve memory by writing the objects over the previous objects, writing, basically changing the objects. Um, mm, how should I say this? So React Native actually, okay, just let me just go ahead and explain it to you. So React Native, what it does is the second argument it passes in the next render before, you know, after leaving the on response responder move, it will zero out all the values. And in the next render, it would then again write over the same values. So this just saves a bunch of memory. And when you look at it in the console, you're going to pretty much see all the values zero as zero. Now, this might be interesting to see that if you do an args of one here, and now if you try to move this, you're going to see that you get nice values, right? But if you, the moment you expand it, these all become zero. Again, same reason. Why? Because when Chrome actually console logged these particular values for the preview, it just, you know, stores it itself in its memory. But when you open the object, Chrome actually tries to fetch the um, all the property values from the memory where it resides. And by the time you fetch it by expanding the object, all those values have been zeroed out for the reason I mentioned earlier. So just a quick fix you can just go ahead and create your own object if you want if you want to basically like preserve it over the time so if i go ahead and drag this now you're going to see if i open this it's all preserved so the things here are you have some sort of state id which is probably a math.random kind of thing generated then we have something like move x move y which looks like coordinates then we have x0 y0 the zero probably accounts for the touch finger right? So we have these particular coordinates with us and we have the dx and dy coordinates. Now this dx and dy coordinates are the delta values. What do you mean by delta values? Delta value means the difference between the initial position and the final position. So the thing is, for example, take a look at this or let me just go ahead and do a very, very little drag, a very small one. There we are. So I did a very small drag and you can see that the delta x and delta y are very small values. I did the drag in the horizontal direction. So delta x is small and delta y is even smaller because there was almost no drag in the vertical direction, right? So yeah, these values basically would allow you to transform, to translate your object to a new position based on the current position. You do not really have the absolute coordinates. dx and dy are not really absolute coordinates, but actually the relative distance between the current position and the new position where the user wants the view to be right so yeah that's that's basically what it does right x0 y0 can be considered our absolute coordinates and vx and vy are the velocity values so if you want really want to use how fast the user did this then this is your number right and then we also have number of um, active touches and this lame property, which I have no idea what this is, but here it is. So, so yeah, that's just how this is how basically on pan responder move works. And that's all for this video. In the next one, we're going to see how we can write our own custom code inside on pan responder to make the ball work again, because it's looking very ugly right there sitting in the top left corner doing nothing at all. 
let's just go ahead and fix that in the next video that's all for this one if you liked it don't forget to like and subscribe thank you for watching i'll see you then in the next video